Hi. Uh, Sarah Dici Rhymes with Peachy here. Today we're talking about laptops. What laptops should you buy? I have reviewed a ton, but before that, we have to unbox something that just came in the mail. Guess what it is. I'll give you like two seconds to guess what it is. The Sony a7S III. Finally. Finally. I've already made a pretty detailed video about this camera, so now it's just about using it. I mean, this is going to be my YouTube camera for literally everything. It is replacing the Sony a7 III. You guys know I use a lot of cameras, whether it's like Blackmagic or some of the Panasonic ones, but wow, I've been waiting so long for this. Finally. The footage of me talking about laptops is gonna be from this guy. I can't wait. I just, I can't wait any longer. Literally one of my all time favorite lenses is the Sony 24-70 f2.8. Oof. Wow, it's such a difference with the grip. Like, it's so much bigger. I'm excited. Uh, where do I even start? Okay, so clearly I've reviewed a ton of laptops over the past two years. And it all started when I purchased this 2016 MacBook Pro. And it was kind of shocking, because for the first time I had paid a lot of money and I hadn't been satisfied with my Apple experience. I'm up until the 2020 MacBook Pro, the MacBook Pro line has just been a mess in my opinion. And one of the reasons was yes, dongle life. I like my ports. And speaking of that, today's sponsor is Ivanki and their amazing seven in one USB-C hub. This is so clutch because a lot of laptops now just have multiple USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is great for versatility, but you need a hub to actually make that happen. This is literally the USB-C hubs of all hubs. HDMI, 100 watt power delivery, SD, mini SD, and two USB 3.0s, and also an ethernet port with a 1000 megabit per second speed. Hello. So if you guys wanna check out the Ivanki 7-in-1 USB-C hub, check out my Amazon link in the description below. I think we should just start with y'all's questions because I took to Twitter and was like, hey, over the past two years, your girl has been reviewing so many laptops. I think I need to tie up some loose ends and help you guys a little bit when you're looking to upgrade or buy a new laptop because I have used, well, many. Okay, the first question is probably the most common one. Best laptop for video editing out right now. Just for context, I'm gonna answer these questions like this is going to be your machine for the next three to four years and it's your only computer and it's gonna be a big purchase purchase, you know, over a thousand dollars. Once laptops get under a thousand dollars, I really don't like to review. Most tasks you'd be doing on a budget laptop, you can do on your phone or like the Note 20, you can just use Samsung Dex. So I'm really interested in the laptops that can do video editing, photo editing, design, 3D, workflows that you just can't do from a phone or a cheap tablet. So I'm sorry people looking for laptops under a thousand dollars, this advice will not be for you. So with this, what I've seen from both sides from the Apple side and also the Windows side. Windows, you can get the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to hardware. If you edit videos in Premiere, you wanna be able to utilize that CUDA rendering and that comes from using a NVIDIA graphics card. So I'm a huge fan, man, if you can get like an RTX 2080 or any of those really heavy duty graphics cards, I feel like that's the best part about going over to Windows land and you can stay within the two to $3,000 range and get a killer, like super killer, video editing setup. And also when you can get them in these crazy form factors like the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo with literally two displays or the Acer Concept D where it's on a literal swizzle, swizzle, not swizzle, easel. These form factors are literally on the cutting edge of technology and they're gonna have an i7 or an i9 and the really powerful Nvidia GPU inside, Nvidia, Nvidia, Nvidia. If you're a Premiere user, that's the best thing about coming over to Windows land is you can get so much graphics power. And then, hey, if you have one of these bigger form factors it's going to be able to properly cool and it's just going to be a beast in the $2,500 range. Now, if you're an Apple user and you just hate Windows so much and you just can't stand it, well, I do have several videos for you that I'll link down below that kind of takes the shock 
out of switching to Windows if you're curious, but hey, if you need that top of the top video editing machine, there's really no other machine that you could go with other than the 2020 MacBook Pro 16 inch. This thing is a beast. And like I said earlier, you know, the 2016 model with the butterfly keys and just uh, there was so much wrong. There was so much wrong with that laptop, but the 2020 model MacBook is just, it knocks it out of the park. It has such a better keyboard and the airflow is so much better. I've done a whole review of that laptop, but the only thing with that is to get top of the top specs, to get exactly what you want, it's going to be way more expensive. Like, oh, like really expensive, that Apple tax. And still with a lot of Windows laptops, you can upgrade the SSD inside of the laptop. That's what I did with my Dell XPS. We have an entire video of that. So you can get a lot of storage on the cheap. Where the MacBook Pro is really cool is, oh my gosh, you can upgrade it to eight terabytes of internal SSD, which I'll say, I've tweeted this so many times and I'll say it here, get as much SSD that you possibly can if you are a video creator and you're gonna thank yourself three years down the line. Video files are getting big. We're kind of all shooting in 4K and it really helps to have that speed. I have projects that I've been working on that are literally one terabyte for the entire video project. Therefore, I regret every machine that is just a one terabyte SSD. So with that said, upgrading the storage, whether it's you by yourself or one of the OEMs like Dell or Acer, it's going to be much cheaper to do those upgrades than it will with Apple. Point being, if you want your laptop to be like a desktop replacement, only computer that you're gonna be editing video on and you want it to last for the next, you know, three or four years, you can get a lot of power for 2,500 over a Windows LAN and then over a MacBook Pro LAN, it's probably gonna be around $3,500. Okay, so this is a great question. A lot of people have a three device life, phone, laptop, and tablet. How do you feel a laptop fits in with that and your thoughts on convergence tech like Microsoft, your phone, or handoff? So I recently talked about Microsoft, your phone, where there's a lot of collaboration in between Microsoft and Samsung to now have a similar ecosystem like iMessage. I talked about that in my Samsung video. I don't want to assume that everyone has this much tech, uh, but it's a really good question. So the great thing about 2020 is you have so many options options for your different workflows. And I'll speak to this kind of like what I've been doing recently because of the state of the world. I haven't been traveling. I went going from being on a plane, say two times a month to just staying at home for the past, well, over six months. So laptops have actually been not that exciting for me to review because I'm not on the go. I'm sitting at a desk all day. <laughs> and because of this, I want to raise the question of, hey, do you even need a new laptop right now. If you need power, if you're doing more heavy duty creative projects, are you traveling? Do you need that super powerful, crazy $3,000, $4,000 laptop? Or could you save some money and get a really good desktop setup for around $15 to $2,000? And somebody here had a question about longevity. And ooh, if you wanna talk about that, desktops, man. They are just rock solid for years and years and years. I mean, behind me, my main gear PC, it still has a 1080 Ti, you know, a generation or two back i9, which were the top of the line specs of the time. But of course, they're a little age, especially with the new NVIDIA graphics cards that they just released. But I am still editing my 4K videos. I'm doing all of the things. I'm exporting a video, but at the same time, editing my thumbnail in Lightroom and Photoshop and in the background have YouTube and Chrome pulled up. I mean, that is like almost an every other day situation. And probably some of the most intense workflows when I have three or four Adobe Creative Cloud applications open up at the same time, a lot of stuff going on. And I can't even begin to express how little issues I've had with being both on a Windows desktop computer and also my iMac 5K at home. There's just something about desktops and just having the proper room to breathe and to work that it ends up being more of a pleasant workflow. And I don't find myself just pulling out my hair 24 seven, uh, like basically 2017 was with my 2016 MacBook Pro when I was trying to do all of my videos from the MacBook with external displays. It was just, ugh, wow, this is a laptop video. And I'm like professing my love for archaic desktop computers. <laughs> this question is a great segue into, hey, what laptop am I actually using right now? Because I haven't updated you guys in a while. Am I back to Apple land? Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so nice to have this flip screen. I've been using the Panasonic S5 a lot, um, and that has a flip screen, which has been really nice. But you know, the autofocus is terrible. 
Something I've personally been doing for, oh, the past six plus months, quite literally all of my video work on my desktop computers, and I love it. And then I have a thin, portable, but still, you know, pretty powerful laptop option for those in-between moments. And this mid-range price sector of laptops has actually been really interesting. So this is the MacBook Air and the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, which has been my go-to laptop, I kid you not, probably since I've reviewed it. And this is where I get so fun over in Windows land, because this, I love of this computer. Like, it has been so reliable. I've probably had it for like a year and it acts as a tablet and a laptop. So it really covers my basis and everything I need. Look at that desktop. That's, that's how you can tell this has really been my laptop. It's so messy. Yes, I am that person. I am quite literally that person. Because hello college students, the same laptop that can edit 1080 and 4K videos. I have edited pretty heavy videos on this $1,500 laptop. Now it starts struggling a bit if you do the thing I mentioned earlier with exporting a video, opening up Lightroom and Photoshop at the same time to make a thumbnail, have 10 Chrome tabs open at the same time, etc., etc. Those instances, it will freak out a little bit. But Premiere, DaVinci is gonna be fine on this. But at the same time, it's thin and light, very portable so you can do handwritten notes on it as well and this Dell pen has been really fun and it's just it just this becomes your iPad as well this was the laptop that made me literally obsessed with two-in-ones right here and then this is the latest MacBook Air you know good price lightweight I wish again it had a touchscreen and this could just be an iPad as well but it's Apple that's like never gonna happen but this does a really good job in Lightroom and Photoshop I have edited real videos on this it freaks out a little bit when I do adjustment layers and start color grading but if you're a Final Cut user you're gonna have like no problems with something like this also you can check out the updated 13 inch MacBook Pros. All of this has been great so far, but let's talk about the T. Let's talk about the things that have gone wrong over the past few years and follow up on some of the laptops that I've reviewed. One of my favorites that is also such a good go-to for video editors has also been the biggest pain in the butt, and that is the Razer Blade 15. Now, this is not just my personal experience. If you start researching online on Reddit, you will find that people have issues with quality control when it comes to Razer. The laptop knocked it out of the park when it came to After Effects, graphics, 3D, rendering, and Maya. I mean, Razer does a really good job in having power and also delivering it in a sleek device. I had a huge issue initially where it just wasn't using the NVIDIA graphics. It was just using the integrated, which is pointless because you buy those laptops to have NVIDIA, to have that dedicated graphics card. Wasn't working, tried everything, literally everything, trust me. And then I sent it in, they couldn't fix it via software, but something was actually wrong with the motherboard. And for some reason, the graphics card just wasn't talking to the computer and they literally had to replace the entire motherboard. It took two weeks to fix and then they sent it back and nothing went wrong with it ever again. And it was a decent experience. It definitely bricked a few times editing in Premiere, but literally we use that laptop for a year and a half to edit my videos here. So that's something to consider. What is the process of fixing if something goes wrong? Because something will go wrong, even with, again, 2016 through 2019, all of the Apple MacBook Pros had so many issues, whether it's with the keyboard or just, I had funky stuff going on with the display, but Apple has a lot of stores. You can make a quick appointment and they usually, usually will fix things within a week. Okay, what else, what else, what else? This is the Dell XPS 15 that I used just for a very long time. I've talked about it a ton. The only issue with this was the display. When it comes to color grading and editing photos, it would sometimes just dim and there was no way to get it back to like a consistent brightness. Um, but then I would like restart the computer and then it would just be fine. And then there would be inconsistencies between editing a picture on here in Lightroom, sending it to your iPhone to post to Instagram and the colors would just look extremely different. So I had to jump a lot of hoops to get the correct color calibration on this display and we made a video about that um, but I have a lot of hope because the new round of Dell XPS is starting with this 13 inch two-on-one I have not had any of those display issues it's just something to consider and gosh I still need to review the new Dell XPS's 15 and 17s because they have a improved well everything
So if you're intrigued by this really cool hardware over in Windows land when it comes to laptops, like you can get some really good value. Don't be scared. I've made several videos that will help smooth that transition. And I will say, I think this is the biggest mistake of OEMs like Dell, HP, Asus, Acer. I think they need to put so much more marketing dollars behind teaching people that Windows isn't terrible. I think people are still scarred from the Windows Vista days. Literally, they should have literature and videos and content about Windows and best practices and how to hook up your phone with Windows via the Your Phone app, educating about it not being terrible. It's very usable. And I've been using it for so long now that I actually prefer a lot of the way Windows does things. Like when I'm on my laptop in the mouse uh, trackpad shortcuts, like shuffling in between different apps like I prefer that now I was probably the least biased when it was that year of switching to Windows but I still use an iMac every single day so I'm not completely clueless I've just gotten so used to Windows on laptops that I yeah I prefer it I know that's crazy it's fine you can make fun of me If you're a Premiere user, I think you're gonna benefit more from having the i9, having some extra cores, and you'll be fine with 32 gigs of RAM. Like, that's plenty. By the way, I love the fact that so many laptops can be charged via USB-C. I have so many of those bricks that just work on all of my tech, and I love it. It's so annoying. I wish we could get USB-C on iPhone, but that's just probably never gonna happen. But my answer is, well, my Dell XPS 13, I love it. Hey, iPads are great. You get tons of updates for years to come. It's under the thousand dollar price tag. You can write notes, which is great for being a student. If a big part of your job isn't video editing, I would say yes, go for it. I just love laptops so much because I want to be able to open up desktop apps. I have always been team laptop and still am over tablet land and even iPads. I mean, I honestly might not have an iPad Pro even though I have loved using it if I wasn't a YouTuber and it wasn't my job to talk about tech. I really I like the versatility of USB-C, but still sometimes I find it useful to have older ports. Same, I am a port girl. I like my ports. When I was traveling all the time editing videos on the airplane, it just always helps to have a USB-A, an SD card slot. I'm just a fan of ports. I love ports. But if you only have USB-C, I'm telling you, this Ivanki USB-C 7-in-1 hub is just so clutch. And it looks very clean. I appreciate the cleanness of it. It just literally has everything you need. Have I mentioned that my Amazon link is in the description below? I'm also a big fan of their 4K HDMI cables. I use them for literally everything. The Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, it has that second display, which is so cool, right? So cool. But really best case scenario for a second display, and we see this now, is the second display can be tilted towards you. Because it's flat, it's kind of hard on your neck to angle down all the time. However, I've recently found the perfect workflow in my podcast setup that I've been using all the time. So now I use it, but there's a period where I'm like, I'm not using this as much as I thought I would. So I think those second displays are going to be really cool once they start uh, tilting towards you. But that's a lot of mechanics and who knows if that's going to work out, but it does exist now. Yes. I 100% think so. Okay, so I think I'm gonna wrap things up. That went way longer than I expected. I keep trying to make 10 minute videos and I keep saying to you guys that I'm trying to make 10 minute videos, but I think it's impossible. I think it's literally impossible. So hopefully you guys enjoy hanging out with me. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. If you want, you can leave me a question down below in the comments and I'll try to get to a few of you. But hopefully this helps two years of insights and also is a good excuse for me to explain why I haven't had as many laptop videos. Well, one, they just take so long to make because it takes me probably three to four weeks to really get used to a laptop where I can condense all of the important information into one video. So it it takes a long time. So when we're in a state of a world where I'm not really using laptops as much, it's kind of harder to get me in that brain space to talk about them. So anyways, let me know if you have a question and let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. Check out my podcast, That Creative Life. I am interviewing next level CEOs, YouTubers, artists every single Monday. And until next time, guys, stay peachy. Okay. <laughs>